you make a major distinction, which I never did until reading this, between the soul and the spirit. I used to use them interchangeably, but you say our soul and our spirit are two, two different things. Explain that, will you? In this view, the spirit is that, that part of us and part of our life that wants more, that wants to uh, transcend, wants to grow, wants to move into a better world, wants to improve ourselves. So even going to school might be a movement of the spirit. I want to know more. I'd like, to, or picking up a book you want to read, you want to say, I want to know more. That might be a spirit thing. The soul is quite different. The soul, the deep soul, is, uh, has more to do with things that are very ordinary, part of ordinary life that you feel intimately. Like, like the very first thing, I think, the first point about the soul is the soul needs a home. It needs a sense of home. So uh, you may be, we all may be looking for a place where we can say, I'm in the right part of the world, or I'm in the right town, or the right area, or I'm in the right house. And that sense of home, of being there where you need to be, this is a very ancient idea. That is kind of a basis for the soul, to really feel at home. So that's why it's so difficult when people don't feel that they have found their home or in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Uh, another thing for the soul, about the soul, is the soul loves um, to be attached. The soul will attach itself. And so we have soul mates. Soul mates who are attached to that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really attached, yeah. you know, when you call, talk about a soul mate. And we're attached to families and to our kids and to pets and to things, even objects, even things that we own. We become attached. That's a sign of a real soulful life that you're mm -hmm. able to make that attachment. Our spirit likes to be detached. So that spirit is that part of us which is transcendent and is yeah. seeking transcendence exactly. at all times. Exactly. And you say we already come, we are born with our spirituality yeah. in much the same way that Pierre Teilhard de Chardin says. Yes. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. Okay. Yes, right. we, are, we are spiritual. It's a natural thing. I don't think that you have to be taught to be spiritual. Because you already are. You already are. If you've ever, ever just walked through a garden and looked at a stop to look at a flower or something and, and be taken in by it. Take it. That's a spiritual act right there. You don't have to be taught that. You are there naturally. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're driving along the road and you see this great sunset uh, and you stop or you pause or you at least take a look at it, you're a spiritual person. Yeah. So what you're saying is making, um, looking at the everyday experiences in our life as extraordinary moments, paying attention to those moments that truly matter to us is what creates its own form of religion. Yes, you just follow your intuition that yeah. way. You take life's moments as they are and you try to fully experience and enter them in a way right. of, of, of appreciation. So you, you nurture and you let your spirituality unfold right from yourself. I see that. Yeah. So how do we stay connected to that spirit, that spiritual side of us? What do we do to stay in the light of that, to shine the light on that? My work helps me. I mean, writing these books, you know, this is a process for me. Mm -hmm. I think we all have to find some work that really speaks to us. You have a work like that. And yeah, I'm talking to you. Yes. Having this conversation. This I is know. my work. Can you well, believe it? It's not only your work, but it's part of your religion. Yeah. Is it? Well, sure it is. Ah, that's you a see, big aha. Uh -huh. I think it's a major part of your religion. Ah, that makes me want to cry. Can I say true. it is the most, it's the biggest part of your religion? Ah. That is true. That is true. Wow, thanks for that.